So, it is the end of 2012. We survived the Mayan Apocalypse. There are no new movies coming out for the rest of the year. Let's get this started. These are my top 10 favorite films of 2012. Now, now before I actually get into the list, um, there's always one movie every year that I don't know what to think of it, I have no expectations for it, or I lo dread seeing it, yet in the end, it turned out to be really, really good. And for, for me, that movie this year was The Amazing Spider-Man. Truly a surprise, the one movie I was dreading. Even though it's not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's still a really good Spider-Man movie. And I hope that they put this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and there are little hints around that Spider-Man could actually be in it. Like the Oscorp Tower almost being in the Avengers, and in the short film, Item 47, one of the characters wears an Empire State University jersey. But, I mean, enough of that. As of now, The Amazing Spider-Man was the biggest surprise this year. Not one of my top ten favorite films of the year, but pretty good nonetheless. Thanks, Spidey, for being a surprise. Now it's time to actually get into what are my favorite movies of 2012. First off, we'll start with number ten, and the proof that even after War Horse, Steven Spielberg can still direct Oscar-worthy movies. Lincoln, starring Abraham Lincoln. I mean Abraham Lincoln. I mean Abraham Lincoln. I mean Daniel Day-Lewis. I mean, as I mentioned in my review, you don't see Daniel Day-Lewis acting. You see Abraham Lincoln on the screen. Every time you see him, he is incredible. He's got the Oscar already. Spielberg reminds us that he can direct really good movies. And just want, really, it's really interesting to watch what the president had to do during the Civil War and basically being the guy who ended slavery. I mean, it's really fascinating. Lincoln is really a great movie. Number nine is Zero Dark Thirty, and what better way to follow up a movie about our 16th president ending slavery with a movie about the decade-long manhunt of Osama bin Laden. I mean, it's really good, really intense, though, again, the last part, the raid, is the least interesting part of the movie. It's still really good. Catherine Bigelow did a really good job directing. Jessica Chastain is incredible. And it leaves you with a good feeling in the sense that, yeah, we got him. We got that bastard. I mean, it, the movie hasn't opened nationwide yet, but as soon as it does, I suggest you go see it. Number eight is my first exposure to Joss Whedon, and the reason I turned into such a Joss Whedon fanboy, Cabin in the Woods. Though he only produced and wrote this movie, it's really a fun horror movie, one of the best I've seen in a while. It's one of my favorite horror movies. Really entertaining. It has some a few scary moments in it, but overall funny. Um, and it's this is one of those movies that for people who have not seen it, it's very hard to talk about it without spoiling anything. So if you're still one of those people who have not seen Cabin in the Woods, I suggest you see it and you either, depending on your perspective, you're either going to love it, like I do and a lot of other people do, or you're going to hate it like some poor souls out there do. But Cabin in the Woods is my eighth favorite film of 2012. In the same way that Cabin in the Woods was an original idea, this next movie is an original idea also. Looper is my seventh favorite film of the year. And thanks again to Jackie who requested me to see and review this movie, because it ended up on this list. Um, just one of the most original films about time travel I've seen in a while it has a really cool and dark future to it. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis are really good. Um, I'm still a little hesitant about the kid in the movie, but I mean, wh whenever he has to get angry, he's really good. Just other times he's not so much. Pretty violent in some parts, but what, whatever the case, still a really interesting movie. There could be a possibility that it could get an original screenplay nomination. I doubt it, but that good. But whatever the case, Looper is so good. You have to see it as soon as it's available on Blu-ray. Even though number six is not technically a video game-based movie, it is the best video game movie we are going to get 
forever, I think, until the sequel. Wreck-It Ralph. I'm a casual gamer, but I'm still, but I'm like very, very familiar with stuff like Street Fighter, Sonic. Basically the big stuff that you have to be blind not to be familiar with. Um, I mean, aside from all the cameos, Roger Rabbit style, it's done, it's a really good movie. Um, really good characters. You heard me talk about it in my review. Um, I hope that there's a sequel, and with news that Mario might be in it as one of the main guys, hurry up with the sequel. I want to see Mario. I want to see Mario in a movie that's good. I mean, well, as it stands now, Wreck-It Ralph is still a good movie, and the weird case where the Disney movie feels more like the Pixar movie. And speaking of Pixar, number five is Brave. Now. Brave and Wreck-It Ralph might switch back and forth between my fav my number five and number six favorite movies of 2012, but as I'm recording right now, Brave is at number five. Uh, after Pixar basically crashed and burned with Cars 2, pun intended by the way, uh, they bounced back with Brave, and though it's not one of their best, not even one of my top five favorite Pixar movies, still really good nonetheless. It's the ultimate mother-daughter movie. It's got beautiful animation. Scotland looks really good. Uh, it's got a lot of bits of humor that works, bits of humor that doesn't work. But overall, if you like Pixar, you're gonna like this. Chances are you're gonna like it. If you don't, then that's fine. But as it stands right now, Brave is number five at my favorite movies of 2012. And continuing on his quest to prove that Ben Affleck is a talented actor and director is Argo at number four. I've, you've heard me praise the town, and you've heard me praise this movie. Um, so suspenseful. Uh, it has a really neat sense of humor, and it's, in my opinion, coined the term, or go fuck yourself. Um, ben Affleck has really come around since Armageddon and Pearl Harbor, and he's made really great movies. He, I hope, I hope, I hope that the Academy nominates this for Best Picture and Affleck for Best Director because he really got robbed in the town. And really, I can't wait to see what Ben Affleck does next because he is quickly turning into one of my favorite directors working today. So good job, Ben Affleck. Keep going and don't let Michael Bay drag you back in. Number three is the end of a great trilogy and is probably going to be number one on every other YouTuber's top 10 favorite movies of 2012, The Dark Knight Rises. Um, though I find the series to be overhyped to the point of ridiculousness, um, these are still incredible movies. The Dark Knight Rises was a really good closure to the trilogy. It's not better than The Dark Knight. It's I like it a little better than The Batman Begins, but... And it's just really good. It has the best score out of the three movies. Though it does not have the best villain, um, it's really good. Um, glad I saw this movie in the IMAX, because those IMAX scenes are incredible. Hollywood, please start using IMAX cameras more than you use 3D, because it's it looks better than 3D does. But I mean, not much I can say about The Dark Knight Rises. It, I mean, really good. I uh, can't wait to see what the future of Batman is, and I can't wait to see what Christopher Nolan does next after Batman. And here I find a perfect segue into the number two movie. One of the things that Christopher Nolan has expressed interest in directing is a James Bond movie, and at number two we got Skyfall. Um, after 2012 not only marked the year for another Batman movie, but also another James Bond movie, and my what ended up being my favorite of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. It brought in the classic Bond while keeping the darkness that Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace had. Really good, really action-packed. I was surprised. I knew this was gonna be good, but I had no idea I would love it this much to put it at number two. Really good music. Um, happy 50th birthday day to James Bond, and I cannot wait to see more James Bond movies. Now, number one, I have a feeling, is no surprise to any one of my friends or family, though, and 
In order to really make a really good movie, you gotta plan it for five years, and that movie that has been in five years in the making is Marvel's The Avengers. I mean, ignoring the fact that I'm a huge Marvel fanboy and a Joss Whedon fanboy, I know the movie is not gonna win Best Picture like Lincoln. I know it's not doesn't have other really important Oscar-worthy stuff like Argo or Zero Dark Thirty. Reason I put this at number one, aside from the fanboyness, is that this movie exists. This has never been done for American cinema. Making five separate movies to have little bits and pieces that sort of connect each other and then to bring them all into this one movie is incredible. I mean, and the fact that it's good of all things. I mean, not just good, great spectacular action, really good dialogue, and great interaction between the characters. Joss Whedon obviously is the ultimate guy for this movie. His, he's a fanboy, and a, the true fanboy of fanboys. <clears throat> I adore this movie to the end. It's tied with Avatar for the most time I've seen a movie in the theater. And I am super hyped for Iron Man 3 and Phase 2 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if Warner Brothers continues down the line of what they're doing with Justice League, they're gonna fail. Rip off what Marvel did with the Avengers. Start out with individual movies for Flash, Wonder Woman, and a new Green Lantern movie. Don't release it the same year as the Avengers 2. That's stupid. Uh, whatever the case, the Avengers is my absolute favorite movie of 2012. That's my, those are my favorite movies of 2012. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the new year 2013. Bye.